Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I was challenged by my Patreon supporters to build a deck around Food Fight, a pretty janky 2-mana enchantment from Wilds of Eldraine. It says artifacts we control can pay 2 mana, sacrifice this artifact to deal damage to any target equal to 1 plus the number of permanents named Food Fight we control. So with 1 Food Fight in play that's 2 damage, double Food Fight 3 damage and so on. So it does take a lot of resources to get the food fight going. We need lots of artifacts we can sacrifice. So that's where Bootlegger's Stash will come in handy. A six mana artifact saying lands we control can tap to create a treasure token. So that could be used to store up a bunch of mana to then spend it on the following turn. But in this deck it's mostly used to generate artifacts that we can then sacrifice to our food fight to repeatedly deal two or more damage. Then we also have two copies of Collector's Vault, which we could activate for two mana to draw and discard, and can also create a treasure token. So that's another repeatable way of generating treasure tokens to sacrifice to our food fight. We also have the Iron Crag as a two mana artifact that can help us ramp. Because it's legendary, we don't want to play the second copy unless we sacrifice the first one to a food fight, or we can discard it to some of our effects, like our Collector's Vault. There's also Volcanic Spite as an early removal spell that can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library and draw a card, so that can get rid of of an extra Iron Crag, and then we also have two copies of Big Score, which discards a card to draw two and create two treasure tokens, so those can then also be sacrificed to our food fight. And then we also have three copies of the Might Stone and Weak Stone, which has excellent synergy throughout the deck. When it enters, can either draw two or give a creature minus five, minus five, and then it taps for double colorless that we can only use to cast artifact spells or to activate abilities, so we can maybe ramp out our bootlegger stash. We've got some two mana artifacts we can immediately play after playing our Might Stone and Weak Stone. And then it also pays for abilities, and two mana is perfect for activating our food fight, so we could potentially even sacrifice Might Stone and Weak Stone itself to deal two or more damage, so also very helpful because it's legendary if we happen to play a second copy. And then it also activates our creature land, a Restless Cottage, is the only reason we're playing a bit of black in this deck, giving us access to a 4-4 creature land that when it attacks can exile a card from a graveyard and make a food token, which can then also be sacrificed to our food fight. And the life game from these food tokens is also very helpful when facing the aggressive red decks in the format. Also have four copies of a Return from the Wilds, which is a ramp card finding a basic land typically, and then we can also make a food token or maybe make a 1-1 human token, which can maybe help us chum block. But for for the most part making food tokens makes more sense in this strategy. Since we are basically a creatureless deck, we don't mind if our opponent has a handful of spot removal outside of maybe activating our Restless Cottage or transforming our Invasion of Zendikar. We're not going to present any creatures to the opponent and we can just win the game with our artifacts and enchantments instead. Invasion another nice way to ramp, give us more lands to then use our bootlegger's stash to full effect. And then we can also transform our Invasion of Zendikar using our Volcanic Spike, potentially even at instant speed to set up an ambush. So that's another neat interaction. And then the Awakened Skyclave as a 4-4 with Vigilance and Haste is good on offense and defense. And then it also counts as a land that can immediately tap for mana. And it can also potentially make a treasure with Bootlegger's Stash on the battlefield. So that's also pretty neat. And then we've got some more cheap spot removal with two copies of Torch the Tower. Plenty of tokens we can sacrifice to bargain as well. And then one of the advantages of being this creatureless strategy is that we get to fully leverage our sweeper, burn down the house, dealing 5 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. So we can also keep planeswalkers in check. On occasion can also make 3 hasty devil tokens that deal 1 damage when they die, but for the most part we're using this as a sweeper, and then we can follow it up maybe with a restless cottage activation to keep up the pressure, or continue killing the opponent with our food fight. And then the rest of our mana base has a few additional red-green dual lands for mana fixing, and then plenty of basics to find with our Return from the Wilds and Invasion of Zendikar to make sure that we don't run out, including two swamps to activate our Restless Cottage, so despite only having six black sources in our mana base, still have treasures, and then of course we've got our Return and Invasion to help find those swamps to activate Cottage in the first place. And then a Boseju can also help deal with opposing enchantments that might be trying to get rid of our food fight or bootlegger's stash. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is acceptable. Bit of removal into some ramp. Opponents with a Festival Crasher does survive my 2 damage torch. Volcanic Spite can still get it. Now letting them untap exposes us to a potential uh, Monstrous Rage, giving Crasher extra toughness. So just take the one, see what happens. And then 
Yeah, if I go for a torch on the infantry, they can also grow to response. So I guess we'll spite the uh, Crasher now then, or could go for spite on infantry, still doesn't play around Monstrous Rage. Okay, and what do we get rid of? Maybe one invasion. And then Tapped Cottage Pass with a plan of torching infantry in response to it getting a plus one counter. Hope they can give it a second counter in response, which would be pretty painful. Another one. And an impulse. All right, so at least they're tapped out. So this will work. And Squee and Monstrous Rage next, so that's pretty scary. But we can wipe the board with Burnout House at least. And then try and draw a few cards with Mindstone. Could also transform Invasion with a Cottage. But I think uh, Burnout House is going to be the safer move when at 10 life. And then can still keep a Boseju, but doubt that's going to be all that relevant. Five cards in Graveyard, so Squee can pretty much come back right away, and they have another one. Ancestral Anger. So we're taking four. Plan next turn is to animate Cottage, transform Invasion, so we have a 4-4 back, and then I can still sank the food to gain 3. If I play Mindstone, I guess I could still activate Cottage, but not gain the 3. So let's play it a little cautiously, and keep up the mana to uh, sack a food token, and if we don't need to, we can still cast a big score at least. So we've got that flexibility. And then definitely Exile Squee. I guess getting rid of another Ancestral Anger also would have made sense. It's gonna be a Crasher. And Squee attack so they can likely finish off the Skyclave here. Play with fire. Okay, so I have to decide now between big score and food token, and I think big score makes sense now that our opponent only has one card left in hand. Alright, there's our food fight. Can once again exile Squee with our cottage. And then. I'm a bit vulnerable to this Festival Crasher on the way back. If I play a food fight, I'll have enough mana to sack three of my artifacts, but I have to spend two of them to kill just a Crasher. Opponent's still getting back Squee, so that doesn't seem great. If I might still and kill Crasher, I could still animate Cottage, but then I guess I still have the mana to sack a food token to gain three, so maybe that's the move. Something like this. Kill Festival Crasher. Use Mindstone to activate Cottage. And Exile Squee. But yeah, we'll essentially be at uh, 2 life with a food token ready to gain 3. So we're still dead to quite a few cards. Inferno, copy their next spell, and if it's a burn spell, we're dead. Play with fire, that's four damage, so gain three up to seven. I guess only take six. So we're not dead yet. Okay, 
Opponent's Christ at the bottom. Another Might Stone. So Cottage definitely has to attack so we can make another food. Or do we? I still have a food to gain three. Let's say we play food fights. Mightstone can pay for its own sacrifice to kill a token. And then what's next? Versus just animating cottage attack. And then I'll have two food tokens I can sack, maybe even play return from the wilds. I think that's better. Even though I would like to get this food fight down eventually. And then go for Ancestral Anger now. See, if I were to go for Might Stone, I can sack one food token. Draw two, maybe hit an extra land drop. If I play Food Fight, I can only sack one thing. So that doesn't seem very good. Or we can just return, make a token. And then I want to say, get a land. And then we'll be able to block one of the goblins and gain three. That's probably a good middle ground. Ancestral Anger, that's a good one. Good thing we exiled one of them at least. So we're at two. Just a land, okay. So Cottage wants to be attacking once again. Exile Ancestral Anger. Opponent's down to eight in the meantime. So this uh, food fight could just end the game pretty quickly now. So let's say I play food fights can still play Might Stone and then have two mana left, that seems a bit risky, but I don't mind playing Might Stone and then have enough mana to sack two food tokens while this draws Stash and Vault, so now we've got all the pieces. So definitely sacking one food token now to play around Instant Speed Burn. And then it's probably still safest to pass and uh, sack another food token instead of playing food fight and dying to any number of uh, combinations. And then if I'm gonna go with this line I may as well sack now to play around Stoke the Flames. Infantry. Okay, can we finally get our food fight down? So let's say we play it. Sack Might Stone to kill infantry. Alright, that's... Uh, Unfortunate to say the least. Finally, when we were able to turn the corner, our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is keepable enough. We've got the cottage. Turn two can interact or play vault. And then food fights, got a few ways to uh, generate more artifacts with the vault and the cottage. Opponent with their own cottage, so we'll play vault. Against black green midrange, we do have to worry about some enchantment removal, but if their hand is just creature removal, we're pretty happy. And it's gonna be a graveyard trespasser. Not the biggest concern, but probably have to address it sooner or later. And a land can go. Okay, we can ramp with invasion, that's nice. And let's see, Mountain plus Swamp is fine. It's gonna be a Tortoise next. If you were to play this deck in best of three for some reason, then Tortoise would be an excellent sideboard card. Once the opponent takes out their removal, Tortoise becomes a nice ramp card to enable Cottage as well. Okay, can wipe the board now. Could also... Volcanic Spite, the Invasion of Zendikar, potentially at instant speed, but then we also want to make sure it stays daytime. And then uh, Tortoise attacking would still help them ramp. 
So I think we just uh, deal with the board now. And then... Could play Food Fight, could activate Vault, which is maybe still better here. Glissa also must answer, since that can try and blow up our Food Fight otherwise. Yeah, I'll get another Invasion. Nightstone also an answer to Glissa, although could also be an answer to Shieldred. So I think I still like Invasion and then Volcanic Spite uh, Glissa. And then I could do it now. Question is whether I want to keep Food Fight. It's okay on this board, could be better if we find a stash first. So it's possible I ditch Food Fight and then hope to pick one up later to close out the game. And then I'll just pass for now. I don't think there's a drawback to waiting on Glissa attacking here. Yeah, I think I'll ditch the food fight. It's a close call because we do have the vault, which is pretty good with it. All right, fine, I'll keep it. Yep, that's what I was afraid of, Virtue of Persistence. So now I'll just be able to get back. Glissa over and over, and uh, yeah, Food Fight can sort of handle it, but not forever. So what's the plan? We can animate Cottage to exile Glissa or Tortoise. Glissa's probably more annoying, although Tortoise provides immediate value when it enters, whereas Glissa does not. And we can handle Glissa with a Food Fight once we play it. So yeah, let's do that. I can Might Stone to draw, and that helps me activate Cottage as well. Or we can play another Invasion, get even more lands out of the deck, and keep Mindstone as an answer to Shieldred. And then we'll be able to transform one of our Invasions. While exiling Tortoise. And then now we've got an extra creature to make mana. Still gonna hang on to the food fight for now. So I'm sure they can answer the Skyclave pretty easily. And they're shielded, so we'll see if we want to Mindstone and Weakstone that. Another Cottage. So let's say we Mindstone. Play Food Fight, then I can still activate twice to kill Glissa. Question then is, do we exile Shieldred or do we exile Glissa? Probably Shieldred, since Glissa we can still more easily kill with the Food Fight. Alright, let's give that a try. Although, we're also going to be sad if our opponent has removal for Cottage when we go and try and uh, exile their creature and they kill it before we get a chance to. But I think we're committed at this point. Could be the opponent's Cottage holding priority, at least that's the hope. So play Food Fight. If I activate Cottage, I can attack and then still make mana with Skyclave and then we've got some treasure tokens left as well. So yeah, let's go for it. Go to attacks. Can send one each at the invasion. Exile Shieldred. And then activate Food Fight. Just enough mana here. And our opponent will just get Glissa back next turn. But in the meantime, we've got a bunch of 4-4s to apply pressure with. Shielder's Edict, Sank a non-token creature. So we'll keep the Cottage, which we'll need to 
deal with his virtue. And play another one. Alright, so... Put on get back Gliss, I'm sure. And they're gonna get in with the cottage themselves. Could consider trading. And then what's the plan next turn? Animate cottage, activate vault, and then we'll have more damage to throw at Glissa. Seems okay. Another food fight, so now it's only one artifact to kill Glissa, that's better. So let's go for it. Can still activate vaults. Now I could also double cottage. Only problem is I would have to sacrifice my stone and weak stone itself. Which is probably okay. So activate cottage. Activate another one. Because I want to keep the vault as another consistent way of making artifacts. Could get blown out by uh, Terra Sunder on my food fight and response, but... My opponent did have a go for the throat for one of the cottages. But Glissa down. And then, yeah, we get to transform Invasion and Exile Glissa. Although at this point, honestly, I might be better off exiling Trespasser, which can provide a bit of value when it enters, whereas Glissa is pretty easy to handle now that we have a food token. Ooh, I guess I accidentally sacrificed my Collector's Vault. I meant to sacrifice my Stone and Weak Stone, so that was a mistake. So now we may lack ways to generate more artifacts. Trespasser, short. Sure. Just a land. Okay, so animate cottage. Mindstone is still nice for activating creature lands, but now we just have too much mana and no way to spend it. So attack. Opponent takes 8. It will switch to night time since we haven't actually cast any spells this turn. So I could just get rid of Trespasser, but then it would just get it back most likely. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just uh, pass the turn. Get back Glissa. And a Tortoise. Okay. That can mill more creatures for virtue of persistence, so that's annoying. And it can get back Cottage as well. So, yeah, this misclick of sacking the uh, Collector's Vault may cost me. Take turn, invasion, not quite what I need. So I can kill Glissa, exile it, but then we lose our Cottage, which is no good. At least right now there's nothing for Virtue to get back, so I guess there's no downside in passing and killing stuff in the opponent's turn. Can thin out the deck some more. Yeah, if we had a Collector's Vault going, I think I would be pretty comfortable in this spot with double food fight dealing three repeatedly. So probably have to kill Glissa instead of Tortoise, but they could also send Tortoise. Just Glissa, so we'll be forced to take that out. And hope 
to find a bootlegger stash to completely take over. Bramble Familiar for 7 mana can put more creatures in graveyard, luckily did not. But another Virtue of Persistence is still bad news. Play Familiar. And an Iron Crag. At least that's another artifact we could sacrifice. So play Iron Crag. Animate Cottage. Attack. Save the double block. And then we can food fight accordingly. Or I could just take out the Tortoise now, exile it. Since that's probably the biggest concern, milling more things into the graveyard. So sure, let's sacrifice Mindstone and Weakstone. Kill Tortoise. And I can still punish a double block. And one of these can go face Skyclave after Invasion. Our opponent will just get both creatures back, or I guess Glissant, one of those creatures. But now we've got a food token we can sacrifice as well. Okay, keep land in hand to discard. A Restless Cottage is putting in overtime. So Glissa plus Trespasser. Bonus still gets the draw step. And the Dread Knights can draw. Take our turn, and there we go, Bootlegger Stash. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, so play the Stash. So do I even bother killing Glissa? I don't think we do. It would let me attack, but our opponent can just uh, double block, get back Dread Knight, things get messy. Don't want to put my Cottage in harm's way either. So we're just going to try and burn them out from this spot, pretty much. This is where having all those invasions of Zendikar is going to come in handy, giving us a ton of mana. Opponent does nothing, and we're going to make all the treasures. Every treasure is 3 damage. Might be worth it to just fire off six damage at our opponent right now, in case they were holding some removal for food fight or stash. I guess if they have removal they would probably blow up the stash, as opposed to the food fight, and yeah, opponent has seen enough. What a grindy game, beating double virtue of persistence with our janky food fight deck on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Iron Crag into return. Set up our Burndown House to wipe the board, and hopefully that buys us enough time to set up our stash. Opponent Mono Blue does not bode well for our spells resolving. Alright, that worked. Probably still go for Mountain, so we have double red. It's gonna be a Fairy Vandal. So maybe a blue-black fairy deck, just mono-blue so far. And it's going to be a combat research. So a Ledger Shredder. They probably wanted to play first to get the extra knife. But now we can spite the Vandal before it gets out of hand. And then ditch Iron Crag. Now if I play Volt, we do let them grow Shredder. 
think that's still okay. Since Burnout House can still catch it at 4 Toughness or 5 if they grow it in their turn once again. And if they double spell in their turn, this is more likely to resolve and kill multiple creatures. Opponent just discarded lane, so Shredder's still a 1-3. There's a second one. And do we see another creature? Yep, triple Shredder. Well, this Burnout House is going to be pretty brutal. Mastermind discarded as well. Not going to waste any time. And then with a land we can try and cast our stash next turn. And then that plus food fight can take over pretty easily. Cottage for now. Okay, play Cottage, play food fights. And then I could still activate Vault at the very least. And then food fight's not bad with a Collector's Vault. Giving us a steady supply of artifacts. So let's see here. Activate Vault. Discard probably another one. Could try and keep both. Although it might be a bit overkill. Don't know if Stash is likely to resolve. But we'll give it a shot. And then I want to tap Iron Crag, leave land untapped to make treasure. Can pay for make disappear here at least. Alright, that actually hit the battlefield. Opponent could still bounce it, but for now we've got all the pieces we need to win the game. Masterminds. I could let uh, resolve and then if they activate it I can kill it in response with a food fight. Don't mind taking two damage. I'll make a treasure. Take our draw step. And just gonna pass a turn here. Don't need to do anything else. Opponent seems to be interested in activating Mastermind, reconsiders. And then now I'll probably pull the trigger. Opponent's got a Fairy Vandal in response, that doesn't bother me. Activates Mastermind, and then I can just use Food Fight once again on the Vandal so it doesn't get out of range. Okay, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, we can just keep mowing down their creatures turn after turn. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty terrible, so let's mulligan. This is better. So we want to keep turn to Iron Crag, turn three invasion, and then, yeah, probably the Might Stone, so a torch can go. Turn one planes into Skrelv. Okay, hoping to dodge turn to Thalia as usual. At least we've got a backup plan now with Return from the Wilds as something we can cast. But there's Thalia, that's too bad. So, I've got a Return, get Swamp or Mountain. Could go for a 1-1 blocker, but Food Token probably more likely to stick around in case of a Brutal Cathar. And then I should get a second Red Source for Burnout the House. And then next turn we can cast our Invasion of Zendikar at the very least, with an untapped land, Might Stone. Can take care of Thalia, and Skrelv can protect against Colorless. So Invasion this. Swamp and Mountain. Play Cottage. Alright, so we've got a lot of mana to work with. Might Stone could draw now. Peacekeeper's gonna make that a little bit pricier. So with the extra tax, I guess we can still cast it, but it's gonna take up my entire turn. We 
Would love to find a food fight. Could also attack with uh, Cottage, go after Invasion of Zendikar, and have an extra 4-4. Four, four. Kind of like that idea. And that also gives us more mana. Not quite enough to cast Invasion of Zendikar here with all the taxation. Opponent's got an ossification. Okay. So I can tap this for mana. And probably sack a food token. Keep our life total a bit higher. Probably hang on to the second one still. And a burn out house can just clean up now. Let's go with that. Okay, so now our cards are a bit more reasonable. Invasion is also pretty good against our deck. So want to prevent them from transforming Invasion, but our opponent sees double Mind Stone and concedes. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Good turn to Iron Crank, setting up Collector's Vault plus Activate on turn 3. Facing a red-black with Brian, so a sacrifice deck. Okay. Don't think we need to spider just yet. Could do so next turn alongside playing a Vault, or could double spite. One Iron Crank can definitely go. It's gonna be a Harvester next. Yeah, probably want to stem the bleeding somewhat, although now Invasion of Zendikar is quite tempting. Get Swamp to enable Cottage. And second land doesn't matter too much. Only called Anvil, great combo with Vran. Okay, so the next turn we'll have to deal with some of the opponent's creatures. Could also consider spiding my own invasion just to transform it, which I don't hate, even though opponent's somewhat likely to have removal for the 4 4 in red black. So maybe step one volcanic spied Vran. Although now our opponent could also sacrifice their own Vran. So maybe do start with transform invasion. If they kill it, then we can take out Vran, potentially tapping Skyclave for mana, so it doesn't go to waste. And Iron Crank can go. So let's say we play Collector's Vault. And then we can attack. Opponent has a go for the throat as we suspected, so now we can kill Vran without our opponent potentially sacking it in response. And then what do we get rid of? Kind of like my entire hand to be fair. Could ditch Burndown the House since we have Food Fight to take out some of the smaller creatures. Although if Shieldred shows up, I'm gonna regret it. Alright, another Food Fight, so plan acquired. Probably still want to activate Collector's Vault instead of showing them Food Fight, since I'll need the uh, treasure token and something to sacrifice. Virus Beetle, that's gonna make me discard, sadly. So. May as well use Vault in response. Discard Cottage, discard one food fight and hope to play the other one. Two damage seems to be enough to deal with the opponent's creatures. Down to eight, so Anvil's gonna be a pretty 
annoying clock. Boseju can blow up the anvil. That works. So play food fights. And then I should just Boseju now. Could also think about animating Cottage. But our opponent still has two mana on tap, so that's a bit risky. And then we can wait for our opponent to attack with a Harvester to kill it. Again, in case they have some instant to sack a creature and draw. And then we'll want to prioritize activating Vault as much as possible. Epicure, okay. Put me to six. Opponent discards a land. And take out Harvester. That works. We fall to four. And we'll see if our opponent taps out or not. They do not. Okay, so activating Cottage seems a bit risky. So instead activate Vault. Find another Vault. I guess that's worth playing still. But I'll probably have to take out one of the opponent's creatures. And then we're still going to be pretty low. So take two. And get to untap. And yeah, it's going to be the same song and dance. Iron Crank can go. Activate Vaults. And Stash. That would be an awesome one to keep. So I can uh, turn all my lands into treasures. Although that does mean only one food fight activation this turn. I'm dead to another Epicure. Quite a few things kill me. But yeah, if they're just holding a bunch of removal, this might get there. Get to untap. And yeah. If I go for stash, then I'll still have the mana to activate food fight once. And then we'll be able to turn the corner pretty quickly. So I guess I can upkeep, kill Epicure. Since we're going to have to take it out no matter what. This way we don't give them the chance to draw into one of those sacrifice effects. Okay, let's see if we're dead. Get to untap, invasion the draw. I think we're just on the bootlegger's stash plan, although I could still play to get two more lands out of the deck, which will then make stash even more powerful. Yeah, I would love to be able to make a food token, I just don't think our uh, cottage is going to survive an attack. So we've got four treasure tokens lined up. Just need a food token now to feel safe. And our opponent concedes, alright, can 
keep making treasures and then eventually turn those into damage with food fight. And yeah, if her opponent was patient and maybe drew another epic here, they could have stolen the game. I guess even Anvil to drain us for one. So maybe a bit of a premature concession here, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Ideally find an untapped land so we can play turn 3 Invasion of Zendikar off our Iron Crag. And almost any land will do except for additional copies of Cottage. Turn 1 Mountain and Kumano, so red aggro. Always going to be a tough matchup for a ramp deck. Although it looks like we'll be able to cast our Invasion next turn at least. And then burn out the house to clear the board afterwards. Cottage gives us a little bit of life gain. Once we can turn the corner, get forest and swamp. So hoping to see another creature we can kill. Could also send Cottage at Invasion of Zendikar to transform it. But now, need to burn down as we fall to 9. And then return making a food token can also gain us some life back. Devastator flies over for 3. Spite is a nice answer, so animate Cottage. Send it at Invasion. And then we can still pretty easily cast our Volcanic Spites. With an untapped plan, I can also sack the food token or cast a big score, both of which are reasonable. Um, yeah, let's just pass. And it's going to be another Devastator, this one a 4-4. Okay, that's tough. So, opponent attacks, take out the smaller Devastator. And then I feel like I need to keep return for the life gain, even though I don't need the extra land as much. And then hope to be able to send in Cottage next turn. Can sack another food token. And found our food fight as well. Mindstone is a perfect answer here. Okay, so if I play that and tap our mana a little bit better. I should still be able to attack with Cottage as well, which seems to be the plan. Now I won't have the mana to also sack a food token, so I'm still dead to a couple burn spells here. But we've got a blocker back on defense for Mitra's Foundry at least. So yeah, our uh, Cottage is keeping us in the game. Dead to another Devastator for 5. And it's gonna be Adversary. No burn spell to get back since we kept the graveyards nice and clean with Cottage as well, but opponent didn't cast any to begin with. So yeah, just a 2-2 Adversary. I'm happy to block. If they animate Foundry attack all out, so I can block fall to 3, but they won't be able to cast a Lightning Strike until uh, I gain 3 with my food token first. And yeah, opponent had the Lightning Strike. Just a little bit short. Buseju could blow up their creature land as well. So what's the safest move here? Send in Cottage and Skyclave. Opponent chumps. And then I have two food tokens. Can I sag both of them? Let's see here. One, two. One, two. Yeah, that should work. So I think that's going to be the plan. Exile Lightning Strike. Got to prioritize instants and sorceries. And 
and then definitely want to sack one food token now so we don't get into an awkward spot where opponent can kill us in response. Yeah, I guess we could have just won the game here with food fight since I had just enough mana to sacrifice two artifacts to deal four damage. So, yeah, I guess uh, we'll just have to kill them next turn, but I don't think there's any specific top deck that can win the opponent the game. When we have three life, we can gain at instant speed. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got double food fight, no red mana, so don't think we can keep. This is better. And then maybe ditch torch the tower. Can ditch iron crank to a volcanic spite. And a turn to Pia. Probably want to take that out as soon as we get the chance. And then next turn I can still Iron Crank, play another Spite. So this could be kind of a Naya Adventure deck. Archivist is next. Also worth taking out, I would say. Although I guess we can wait and see until an enchantment enters, which is what I'm most worried about. The opponent drawing extra cards. And then what to get rid of with Spite? Kind of like my entire hand. Tough Cookie would grow the Archivist. Sure, I'll take it out now. Yeah, I don't think I need to get rid of anything. Next turn, big score. Make some treasure. Play Tapped Cottage. And we can discard Mountain. So we'll take two. deploy our food fight. Could also consider attacking with Cottage, but our opponent does have some mana untapped, so I'll respect it. And then return food token land. Could still torch the cookie, but for now it doesn't seem needed. And get either mountain or swamp. Get a swamp. Alright, so we're in control now with her food fight. Could use a more steady supply of uh, artifacts. Questing Druid finds lands and another Questing Druid. And they're gonna play it. So probably torch the Questing Druid here. Or we could just torch the cookie and then use food fight to kill the druids in my turn. So we don't take unnecessary damage. Could have scryed too with torch the tower. If I sacked a token, but I think I want to hang on to all my artifacts. Burn out the house is not bad either. So let's say we were to animate cottage, attack. Then I'll still have the mana to activate food fight once. And we probably want to take out Questing Druid before it gets out of hand, although we could also let them overextend into Burnout House. Although with our opponent only having three lands, it's unlikely that they can really empty their whole hand. So I think we're better off just dealing with Questing Druid now. And then we can one for one some creatures until our opponent gets enough mana to deploy the rest of their hands. And then we can potentially wipe things up. Turn the earth, gains a bit of life, and can shuffle cards back, that's fine. And there's questing druid number two. And a Pia. So opponent's preferring the plus one counter over the extra Thopter here. Now might be a good time to burn out the house, or we could might stone and weak stone. Either taking out Pia or drawing two. Given that we have a burn in hand, I don't mind just drawing two, let them overextend, and then sweep the board. 
But I may as well leave some uh, a red mine untapped in case we need it. And Might Stone does give me the opportunity to uh, pay two mana for food fight purposes. Can play a Vault and then activate Vault. Could do it now, or we could keep up a food fight activation just in case. So we've got a ton of artifacts. Just missing a stash or maybe an extra food fight to speed things up. Destroy evil, yeah, that goes after food fight. That's too bad. So in response we could try and kill questing druids. Does get punished by another instant. And I suppose this is an instant, although it wouldn't grow a questing druid since it's green. I think we just let it happen and then uh, plan to burn out the house. So now we know we can dig towards another food fight with a vault. Take five. And see what we can find. Cottage I'll keep over swamp. And then do we fire off burn out the house now or do we wait another turn? Kind of don't mind waiting another turn. Can activate Cottage. Try and exile Turn the Earth. And then I should activate Vault now. Finding return from the wilds. I guess we can ditch one cottage since they didn't remove the first one. And then cast return. Making a food token. And uh, getting a basic seems fine. Okay. So the game continues. We've got three food tokens. Four treasures. Duelist goes upstairs, so yeah, opponent could potentially try and close out the game, although we still have six life ready to be gained. Tough cookie, and yeah, now our opponent's starting to overextend into our burn out the house. They could use it to animate their existing artifact, but the opponent's fully committed now. Questing grew up to a 5 5, so they could maybe survive burn if they have another spell they can cast, but doesn't look like it. So we'll take 8 down to 2. Untap. Food fight also excellent. So let's wipe the board. Still have to watch out for a follow up cookie animating any of their food tokens. And I guess Duelist could also try and burn us out, so still need to leave up some mana for food tokens. So that's dealt with. So do I play Food Fight now? May as well. Or I could animate Cottage using Mightstone and Weakstone. Get an attack in and leave up mana for food tokens, which is maybe safer. And then next turn deploy Food Fight. Don't know if this really matters. Points at 10. So yeah, next turn, food fight represents a lot of damage. Got quite a bit of mana to spare. Tough cookie, yeah, that uh, threatens lethal by animating one of the food tokens, as long as they pick the one that doesn't have summoning sickness. Opponent actually doesn't seem to go for it. Maybe holding a heart flame duelist to kill us on the spot. Play food fight. So I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 if I play the forest. So that's 5 food fight activations, which is lethal. Now the only concern is our opponent holding Heart Flame Duelist to kill us in response. So it would be slightly safer to deal with the tough cookie and gain some life here. So we could wait until their upkeep and then start sacking some of our artifacts to go upstairs. Yeah, let's give that a shot. 
And then if our opponent wants to sacrifice their food tokens to stay alive, that's fine by me. We'll uh, essentially waste their turn. Just gotta be mindful of a potential burn spell killing me in response. It's always good to leave some treasures untapped so we can maybe sack a food token in response. Alright, so our opponent gain three. Do we try and take out Tough Cookie? Opponent could then animate their other food token in response, make it a 4 4, and then we can still sack a food token to gain three up to five. Yeah, I guess that's worth it. Now I guess they could sacrifice Tough Cookie itself, which is also a food, which, uh, yeah, I guess will work out quite well for them. Maybe there was a reason to wait until it attacked, so they couldn't uh, sack it in response. Yep. Alright, it's their turn now. Can also activate Vault just to make a treasure. And then we still have Double Cottage as well. So there's no fear of Duelist burning me out now. Plus we could still sack treasures to gain life if needed. Volcanic Spite. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, animate Cottage attack. Opponent picked up Boseju so we can float some mana. Activate another Cottage if I'd like. Sure. And then I'll still get a, a land here. Attack. Opponent's at 6. And then I'll be a little bit short of uh, killing them since I only have 5 mana. Yeah, pass a turn. Opponent's got nothing. Chuck one of these at them. Opponent can gain 6 here. Attack. So in response I could deal four. Sure. Just want to make sure I don't die to a slash. Bonus acts another food. So now we don't need to worry about slash and I should have just enough mana to kill them in response with food fight. Okay, so throwing food back and forth here, but we got there in the end. Awesome. Alright, so we got to see our food fight deck in action. Now it's not going to win any standard tournaments in the near future, probably doesn't belong on the ranked ladder either, just going to face too many aggressive decks that can steamroll you before you manage to set up all your engines, but it's definitely a fun casual deck, getting to see food fight killing the opponent without needing to attack them is pretty funny, and uh, of course also has great synergy with our cottage, so definitely reason enough to splash a bit of black in your otherwise red-green ramp deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.